thank you so much for joining us this afternoon to celebrate the uh, advanced screening of Open Range. Um, it stars, obviously, Kevin Costner, but someone near and dear to my heart, which is my husband, Herb Cohen. Um, your presence here today is a tremendous contribution to the story of the arts in the state of Wisconsin. Thank you. Without you, we wouldn't be able to talk about the presence and the importance of the arts in the state of Wisconsin. So thank you very much for coming tonight. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to have a simple question and answer session. Um, we, we have a time limit, which uh, our ladies will sort of help you uh, mind, if you will. And with that, I'd like to introduce Kevin Costner and my husband, Herb Coleman.
this is saying something coming out of the business world, but I've never seen anything that well organized. With so many disciplines, so many skills brought to bear at one point in time. And then to keep all those skills focused and attentive. And, 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 and not falling apart. I mean, it's a tremendous, coming from business, I understand what it takes to organize something like that. And it was just a magnificent. I wouldn't suspect I'd ever appreciate that, but that's what moved me. Um, Do you have any acting about it now? <laughs> well, you know, curiously, the two of us, even though we're 16 years apart, we have a somewhat similar background. When I went to college, uh, there was a point in my life when I was determined not to go into business, but rather into the theater and acting. And I spent two years of my life as a poet and as an actor, uh, majoring in theater. I eventually made the decision after marriage to go into business. Kevin, on the other hand, went to uh, California State University at Fullerton and majored in business. But while he was doing this, five nights a week were devoted to acting lessons. He chose to go into acting because he happened to run into a fellow by the name of Richard Burton one evening, day coming back from Mexico. And Burton persuaded him if you really were interested in acting, that's what he had to do. Unfortunately, I never ran into Richard Burton. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the difference between the two of us. He's the actor and, and the star, and I'm the businessman. But now that you've run into Kevin Costner, are, are you ready to check business and what? follow your uh, <laughs> poet and uh, acting? Uh, for some reason or other, I like my security. <laughs> 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 Where did the story for Open Range come from? It was um, from a novel, and I never read that novel. I wasn't even aware that it was initially. I started working on the script with the writer, and then at one point, um, you know, I found that, that it was, but I never bothered to read it at that point. I just kept going in the direction that I wanted to take it. Why was this cause important to you? Why did well, you decide to do a fundraiser to raise money for this particular the, um, what's important to me is friendship, and how friendship works is, 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 is uh, uh, just as important. In this instance, I didn't decide to do that, but what happened was I, I was able to, uh, through our friendship uh, and through the work that we did together, uh, change the uh, financial situation of two different organizations just by the, this movie. When you, when you start a movie, it's a lonely, Point. You're all by yourself. You're wondering if you should make this movie. Westerns aren't being made. They're, for the most part, they're not very good. It's not deemed to be commercial. And so, you know, just by myself, I, you know, I had to have that own private you know, little, little fight. And again, you know, you know, you're, you're always a little bit. I always feel like I'm a little bit out of step because here I am making a western. But the, the, the great thing about following your own intuition and following your own dreams and, and, and taking care of your friendships are, a year and a half later, here we are, I have a movie that I feel really proud about. I'm with my friend who I'm really proud of and we're able to take both of the things that, that we do and combine them together and make a difference in two organizations that are trying to make a difference for somebody else. And that really uh, is much more important than the movies itself in a way. It's just the circle of how things, how we can all interact and how we all, we all are. We're not just one thing. Herb certainly is not just a businessman. He's a lot of things to a lot of people. He's, a, he's an ambassador for this state, for this, for this city, Sheboygan, for his own community, Kohler. There's no place in the world that he talks about and his face lights up the way it does when he's talking about this place. And, and Natalie is the same. They're proud of this place, and, and uh, so really, the thing that brought us here isn't any business. It's just, it's just, uh, it's just us working at our friendship. So, have you been looking for a house in this area, or what? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I have the three best houses you can imagine. I can stay in anytime I want. <laughs> It's a topic of discussion and disappointment. <laughs> I will tell you that Kevin and his fiancée, uh, Christine, have two of the best-looking swings uh, in golf. Certainly in amateur golf, but in all of golf. And I saw Christine in a uh, drive this morning. That was longer. And this was a number 15, remember this, number 15 on the straight scores. Remember when the pros play it next year. I'll guarantee you no pro will be in the position that she was in after her drive on number 15. It was incredible. But the two of them have... Uh, she can cook. And she can cook. <laughs> <laughs> How did she decide to cast her into your movie and, and the role to give me something? Well, the... Um, it's just sometimes in your, your life you feel like there's something you can offer somebody that's offered so many, so much to. You know, there's a, there's sometimes the person that does a lot, gives a lot, you know, we, we don't, we think they have everything and, and, um, and what can we possibly give them that they haven't had. But really you always start with your friendship and there was this, this uh, I, I've known of Herb's uh, um, uh, love of theater and I think that he, I think his business is theater. I think he, it's a classy, one of the classiest businesses in, in all of uh, America, in the world, and it, because there's a theatrics to it, there's a drama to how uh, his company works and operates. There's a certain poetry to how he treats the people that work for him in terms of it's it's and, and if you it's a hundred year old plus company, and it's a visionary. It was a visionary company then, and it's a visionary company. I can't even understand the damn commercials. You know, it's, 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 uh, all I know is that's my friend's stuff. You figure it out. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, you know, uh, the, it you know there was a, a point in time where I just I just uh, felt like uh, for our own personal reasons that if, if he wanted to come up and could come up and be with me, that I would uh, I would have him. And uh, I also. Uh, I thought he would be good, and that you have to understand that I don't mess around with. Um, there's not anything I wouldn't do to help someone, but there's some things in our life that that are uh, that has a sacred quality, and I feel that about the movies. And I would not have had her in the movie if I didn't think that he could help the movie. If there wasn't a way that he would lend something to it, I just, I just, it's the one thing I just don't mess with. Would you like to see a future project set here in Wisconsin at some point? We were actually talking about it today. Um, you know, you guys have a big secret up here. Uh, it's really, it's really beautiful. I don't, I can't speak to the winters. Uh, I hear they're really severe. But the, the two times I've been here, I have been, I have been more than impressed. And I thought, if if I could think back in my childhood, if I could have been raised somewhere, I thought that 
that this would be a place that where I could uh, wish that I could have been raised, given all the kind of activities that I actually find interesting, uh, besides school. <laughs> uh, Robert Duvall in the movie, can you talk a little bit about it? Well, Robert's a world-class actor, and, and he's our star of our movie, and, and uh, you know, I think that, you know, if you're going to see the movie, are you seeing it tonight? Okay. Are you going to see it tonight? Well, you're just going to have to just, you're going to just sit there in the dark, you're going to enjoy a, 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 a very dramatic performance by not only him, but Annette Benning and a friend of mine, Michael G., who, who died uh, a couple months ago, and he's a, an actor that I've described to other people as a Walter Brennan and a Ward Vaughn of our generation, and we've lost him. And so <clears throat> I dedicated the movie to my parents and, and in special memory to Michael Jeter. So I think, um, you know, you're going to, hopefully you'll enjoy Robert the way I do and, and why I picked him to be in the movie. Kevin, you play a lot of, you can play a lot of idealistic characters, heroes sometimes, sometimes not, but always idealistic. Yeah. Why not so many villains? A lot of actors say they'd rather play a villain than a Yeah, I, listen, it's, it, it, villains are fun to play. I played one in 3,000 Miles to Graceland. I played a less than honest guy in, in a perfect world. So I'm not really afraid to go into that thing. And I also don't try to take roles to just prove I can act. You know, sometimes in a sports team, we can look at the five guys, and there's one 6'11", and he says he wants to be the guard, that he handles the ball really well. You say, I know, but in this instance, on this team, you should probably be our center and let the guy who's 5'5", five five be the guard. And I say that in a, in a it's, it's a, a simple metaphor, but it's really, uh, or analogy, I actually don't understand either word. Uh, forget about the word. Um, but I say that simply because when I produce, as I do, I produce and I direct, I think it's important for you to know where you fit the best in a film. It's not so important to go out there and just prove something uh, that, oh, I'm a great character actor, I can be that. I know I can play characters, and I play them at home, but it's not always in the best interest of a movie if I go out and play. The, the, there's a thing that I do in the movies, and it's important that I recognize that. And any opportunity I have to be flashy or do something different, if it fits that movie, you can, I guarantee you I will take it. How has the focus of your career changed in the last 20 years? Well, I don't know that it has changed. It, it's always been important to me, whether I have or haven't, to, to make the, the best movies of my generation. And that's a goal for myself. Now, whether I have or haven't is, is really, that's up for other people to decide, but I never take a movie without thinking it has a chance to be great, and that, and that always starts with the writing for me. Do you think that this movie has a chance to win great awards? I think this is a serious movie that, that is highly entertaining, and I think that Disney had a lot of courage in picking it up. It's a smaller budget movie. It's just over $20 million, and if you've been following the price of movies, these days, that, that's uh, probably not even their catering budget. But I think it's a, it's a, I think what you'll see is world-class actors lending their craft to uh, a, a, one of our greatest genres, the Western. You see Annette Bening, Sir Michael Gambon, Robert Duvall, Michael Jeter. And I think uh, my hopes are that, that when you see the movie, you'll realize how brave, for instance, Annette Bening is to be in this movie, to do it without makeup, to a real beautiful woman. Uh, our generation's Hepburn, I've, I've, been, I've said before. So I always have high hopes, but the first obligation of a movie is that you don't, is that you feel like you got your money's worth. The, 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 the next biggest thing that can happen as a result of this movie is that you're willing to talk about it and share it with somebody when you walk out of the theater, just the same way when you read a good book or hear a wonderful piece of music, you have the desire to share that. Can you tell us what role you played in the movie? What part did you play? And where can we find you in the movie? It's a movie fairly hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, this is a role that Kevin uh, created. When it was originally written, it was um, silent and uh, somewhat obscure. And he made it into uh, a, a true character. Uh, I appear six times. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I hit the cutting room floor once. <laughs> That's an actor. <laughs> <laughs>
that knows how often he's in and how many lines he's in. He was a true actor. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ones I hit him, I thought was awfully good. It was the midst of a gun battle. And uh, it, it, was, it was a great gun battle. But he had so many shots of gun battle, as you'll see in this picture. Um, I can understand why I hit the floor, but it hurt. Yeah. No, I, it's like a legion of lawyers were at my door, Steph. Who you in the movie then? I'm a, the owner of a cafe. And I uh, collect sloppy, dirty dishes. I insist that the uh, sheriff pay two bits for his coffee. Um, when Mr. Costner asked me to be in the movie last June, a year ago, uh, I thought he was crazy. I said, I'm a working man, Kevin. And you want me to just flit off and be in this movie? <laughs> and he kept after me. And finally I said, OK, I have two conditions. Meet one of them and I'll do it. I said, either you let me ride a horse. I've ridden since I was two and I've been a breeder and I wanted to ride a horse in a movie. So he let me ride a horse or let me shoot someone. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, I can do the latter at the former be a little tough. <laughs> so that's what happened. So one scene, I, the first scene he shot with me actually. I shoot someone with a double barrel shotgun from three feet. <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell him everything. <laughs> hey, tell, tell him you got the girl. Tell him you're her Make him pay to see it. <laughs> but that's not the scene that made the cutting room <laughs> No, that one is in. <laughs> I just wanted him up there and uh, there was a lot of reasons and I just, I just started to try to put him in spots. And, and um, it's, a, it's a small thing, but, he, but it's, uh, make no mistake, and, he's, and I'm really proud of him, and he's really good in it, and it was all we could do, but it was, uh, it was really professional, was he, how he approached it, and he showed up, and, and, uh, and he came up on his own, he didn't tax the production, he understood what, he understood everything, you know, the, the interesting thing about Herb, and one of the really great things you, that we all have in the friends that we call our best friends is he gets it, you know, he gets it what I wanted him to do uh, and how it was going to have to be, you know, and it was like, it was, it was nice. Okay, we have time for me. One more question. Kevin, you're from the California area. We'll get, we'll get you too. Go ahead. You're from the California I just wanted to ask you what you think of Arnold Schwarzenegger writing Well, I, I think that, um, that, you know, uh, it can put a smile on your face in a sense and, and you know, maybe it's curious and people, talk about a circus going on out there, and I wouldn't disagree with any of the words that people would choose, but I, I do believe uh, that um, when we're successful in our life that we're supposed to look outside ourselves. And when you look outside, out, outside yourself, you're looking at your fellow citizens, you're looking at your community, and public service is probably the highest uh, uh, form of service that one can do in their life, save, raise a, a wonderful family, a responsible children that will contribute to the world also. To when you're successful, you're supposed to step outside of yourself and, and want to serve. You know, all you hope is that the people that do that, that their intentions are pure, that they're good, that they come with solves. And, um, and I'm interested to hear the dialogue. Um, you know, this isn't the sixth grade where you vote for your friends. You know, this is real and things are at stake. And, um, and that's, it's going to be interesting to see um, what, he has, what he has to say. But I'm not surprised when a man or woman wants to step outside of their, themselves and, and, and go into public service. Um, I don't know where the notion came that people who are in Hollywood don't have a brain. They happen to be some of the smartest, singularly the biggest community that gives money around the world. There's no other group than actors that gives more money. There's no other group in the world that raises more money than actors do for causes. 
and when they somehow end up on the other side of a political issue, we're somehow expediently stupid. And uh, they're not. They're caring individuals in, in, in many, many instances who have made this world better. You had a question. Just to follow up to your statement, Herb, do you get the girl? <laughs> Tell him. <them. laughs> oh, you're telling him. Yeah. This, this is Hollywood. I don't. <laughs>
gotta stand in front. No, 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 no.
said, the former hurt might be a little difficult, but I can almost guarantee the latter. <laughs> so off we went. We made four visits, four remarkable visits. We landed in Calgary and drove 120 miles northwest to the foothills of the Canadian Rockies and onto an Indian reservation where Kevin was given permission to build a town, Harmonville. And this was the most magnificent set I could believe. And the entire experience was an education that this businessman truly appreciated. I've never seen such organization. I've never seen such union work rules. <laughs> Would you believe they have shifts? And a shift is 12 hours long. And a shift, no, here's the interesting part. A shift can start any time of day. Whenever the director dictates when it will start. So you can have a shift that starts at 3, 3 a.m. And mind you, lunch is always precisely six hours after the start of the shift. <laughs> Everything stops. Would you believe that? Lunch at 9 a.m.? That's the way we work. And it was a remarkable coming together of discipline and so many different disciplines that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't imagine how they did it, but they did it to perfection. Everyone maintained their focus. Everyone was prompt, and it was a magnificent experience for me. Now, I just have to tell you a few little things about this man that perhaps you don't know. He's 16 years my junior. He was born in 1955. He was born the son of a man who was a ditch digger. And he was an electric service repairman for the utility in California. The film was called The Big Chill. Yeah. Now, those of you who have the occasion to see The Big Chill will have to search for Kevin Costner. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, he ended up on the cutting room floor. And, and what you see him as in the big chill is a corpse. <laughs> Fortunately, his next picture, Silverado, was much more noteworthy. But he went on from there, and he's created, with open range, 21 different pictures. Many of these pictures are about heroes. And I'd like to just quote something. Kevin has said about heroes. Real heroes are men who fall and fail and are flawed, but went out in the end because they stayed true to their ideals and beliefs and commitments. It's my pleasure to introduce a hero, my friend, Kevin yeah, Cosby. Put, put a little secret you guys have up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys are not anything, and you should not covet anything. What you have here is special. I've, I've, I've driven to Sheboygan and now Kohler Town, and it's a. Um, you, you, you uh, are living a beautiful life. If I, if I wanted to grow up, I would have, I would have chosen this place now that I've seen it. Um, once you feel good that you're inside, the rest of the people are outside. You gotta know somebody, or you gotta pay. And the people you paid tonight, you paid for a beautiful cause to, to uh, help other people uh, go forward. Thank you very much for that.
their state and their town, and they are ambassadors for Sheboygan and Color Town all around the world, and nothing makes their faces light up as much as when they're talking about their hometown.